Good morning, and welcome to God's house for worship. Our final psalm for this month that we've been focusing on the psalms is Psalm 30. And in this psalm, we see how wonderful it is to be victorious, to be a winner, because God has given us our victory. He has rescued us, saved our lives from the pit of destruction. And as we shall see from our other readings, we shall see that greatest of victories that Jesus has granted us, the victory over death. How Jesus, with the power that he has from his victory over death, the power that enables him and will enable him to recall us from our graves after we have died. We'll follow the order of worship of setting one on page 154, and we'll begin with the opening hymn, hymn 816. May God bless our worship this morning. Please stand. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise you. We bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer. You sit at the right hand of God the Father. Have mercy on us. For you only are holy. You only are the Lord. You only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all power and might, you are the giver of all that is good. Help us love you with all our heart, strengthen us in true faith, provide us with all we need, and keep us safe in your care. Through, Jesus, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is recorded in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 through 33. Thus writes the prophet Jeremiah. By the mercies of the Lord we are not consumed, for his compassions do not fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. My soul says, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good to hope quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bears a yoke early in his life. Let him sit alone and be silent, because the Lord has laid this upon him. Let him stick his face in the dust. Perhaps there still is hope. Let him turn his cheek toward the one who strikes him. 
Let him be filled with disgrace, for the Lord will not push us away forever. Even though he brings grief, he will show compassion on the basis of his great mercy. Certainly, it is not what his heart desires when he causes affliction, when he brings grief to the children of men. The word of the Lord. We continue with the psalm of the day, Psalm 30, in the front of the hymnal. turned my wailing into dancing, into dancing. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. You have turned my wailing into dancing, into dancing. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoice in the morning. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. You have turned my wailing into dancing into dancing. The second reading is recorded in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 15. Thus writes St. Paul, We hold this treasure in clay jars to show that its extraordinary power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed, perplexed, yet not despairing, persecuted, yet not forsaken, struck down, yet not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of the Lord Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. To be sure, while we are living, we are continually being handed over to death because of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our mortal flesh. 
So then death is working in us, but life is working in you. Since we have that same spirit of faith, which corresponds to what is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken, we also believe, and therefore we speak. For we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and bring us together with you into his presence. In fact, all this is for your benefit, so that as grace increases, it will overflow to the glory of God as more and more people give thanks. The word of the Lord. Out of respect for the words and works of Christ, and as you are able, please stand to acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel appointed for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in Mark chapter 5. We read, When Jesus had again crossed over in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him near the sea. Then one of the synagogue rulers, named Jairus, came. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and repeatedly pleaded with him, My little daughter is near death. Please, come and place your hands on her so that she may be healed and live. Jesus went with him. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue ruler's house arrived, saying, Your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher any more? But when Jesus heard this report, he told the synagogue ruler, Don't be afraid. Only believe. He did not allow anyone to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. They went into the house of the synagogue ruler, and Jesus saw a commotion with people weeping and wailing loudly. When he entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him. But after he put everyone out, he took the father of the child, her mother, and those who were with him, and went in where the child was. Grasping the hand of the child, he said to her, Talitha kum. When translated, that means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the little girl stood up and began to walk around. She was twelve years old. They were completely and utterly amazed. Then he gave them strict orders not to let anyone know about this, and he told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn 831.
A reading from the 30th Psalm. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you lifted me up. You did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. Lord, you snatched my life from the grave. You kept me alive, so I did not go down into the pit. Make music to the Lord, you his favored ones, and give thanks when you remember his holiness. For we spend a moment under his anger, but we enjoy a lifetime in his favor. In the evening, weeping comes to stay through the night, but in the morning there is rejoicing. But I, I said in my security, I will never be knocked down. Lord, in your favor you made strength stand like a mountain for me. Then you hid your face. I was terrified. To you, O Lord, I call. To the Lord I cry for mercy. What gain is there in shedding my blood? in sending me down to destruction. Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your truth? Lord, hear and be merciful to me. Lord, be a helper for me. You turned my mourning into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my whole being may make music to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I thank you forever. The word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Win some, lose some. That's often a phrase you hear when you just lost. Be that in a business deal or a sports event or whatever it might be, sometimes you lose. And it's not pleasant. Usually, we prefer to win. Sure, something can be fun even when you lose, but usually things are a lot more joyous in victory. Losses can be devastating. And the greater the loss, the greater the devastation. And it may seem that the greatest loss that we can experience is death. We have lost someone that we loved, someone that we cared about. And it's hard to not be devastated and turn to mourning and wailing for our lost loved one. However, we who know Jesus Christ have hope even in that loss, hope for victory. Why? Because we know that our Lord Jesus has power over death. Our gospel for today shows Jesus turn a loss into victory by showing that he has the power to raise the dead. This would just be a preview, though, of his ultimate victory when he himself would rise from the dead, proving that he has stripped death of all of its power. He defeated death, our greatest enemy. When we are grieved by the loss of a loved one, Jesus says to all of us the same thing that he said to Jairus. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Your loved ones who have died believing in me are not dead. They are only sleeping. Death has no power to hold them. Death has lost. Because I live, they shall live. And you shall live. I have won. I am the resurrection and the life, and I shall give you my crown of victory. It is this knowledge that allows us to speak the psalm of praise, Psalm 30, with confidence. As King David wrote, we can all joyously say, I will exalt you, O Lord, because you lifted me up. You did not let my enemies rejoice over me. Truly, the Lord did not let our enemy of death rejoice over us, but he crushed it, destroyed it, and took away its power forever. By faith, the victory that Jesus won over death is ours, and his mercy renews us. Exalt the Lord's victory. 
His victory over death. His victory that came by His mercy. Psalm 30, in its heading it reads, A psalm, a song for the dedication of the temple by David. It tells us that it was written by David for the dedication of the temple in Jerusalem. David had made massive preparations to build the temple, but it was actually his son Solomon, after his death, that the temple was built. Part of David's preparations for the building of the temple was to write this psalm for the day it would be completed and dedicated. Immediately we see, though, that this psalm is about more than just a building, but about the good things that the Lord has done. David can think of many examples in his own life, but he wrote this psalm so that everyone who would hear it would think about how the Lord has been good to them. David begins by explaining how he will exalt the Lord because the Lord exalted him. The Lord lifted him up. The Lord did not allow his enemies to rejoice over him. The Lord gave David victory. David cried out to the Lord, and the Lord healed him. He snatched his life from the grave and kept him alive so that he did not go down to the pit. This psalm is one that we can all speak with praise because the Lord has done this for us all. David may have had many real-life dangers that God saved him from, but David also knew that the Lord saved him from his ultimate enemy, death. In our gospel reading for today, the Lord, Jesus, shows that he has power over death, how he has victory over death. He showed that death is nothing to him, he can turn death to life with just his word because he himself crossed over from death to life. The reason that we die is because we are sinful. We have disobeyed God and thus we are not worthy of eternal life. So Jesus came, took all of our sin, all of our death upon himself and then died himself and then rose back to life because he destroyed death. So his word can recall each and every one of us from the grave. Like he did for Jairus' little daughter, he will do for everyone who believes in him. I point to this cross so often because I want you all to look at Jesus' expiring self on the cross and realize that because he did this, because he died like this, you will not stay dead, but you will rise as he rose. You were connected to this death and to this resurrection when you were baptized. It was then that Jesus gave you his victory by his mercy, by raising you from spiritual death, so that you would one day physically rise from the dead. It is truly by the mercy of God that we have this victory, because we could not win this battle by ourselves. In fact, because of our sin, we deserve to have God oppose us and crush us because of our disobedience. But thankfully, that's not the kind of God we have. David describes God in this way. We spend a moment under his anger, but we enjoy a lifetime in his favor. God's anger is but a moment compared to his mercy. God does indeed have anger. He is angered by our sin. But his mercy is far greater. And because of his mercy, he chose to direct his anger at his only begotten Son instead of us. And his Son allowed that to happen to him willingly because he is the same God as the Father, full of mercy. This lets us be secure in our salvation. Like David, we can say, I will never be knocked down. Lord, in your favor you made strength stand like a mountain for me. But sometimes we do take this salvation for granted. 
And sometimes God does allow us to experience those moments of his anger. And like David said, then you hid your face. I was terrified. But then David turns to the Lord for mercy again. God doesn't want us to experience his anger, but he will allow us to experience a moment of it to return us to his mercy. Like Jeremiah wrote in Lamentations, certainly it is not what his heart desires when he causes affliction. Any parent would rather their child not learn the hard way. When you say, don't touch the stove, it's hot, it'll hurt you, You'd rather the child say, okay, mom, or okay, dad, I won't, rather than have them touch the stove and learn the hard way by a painful burn. God would rather us simply hear his instruction and obey it rather than learn the hard way by sinning and then suffering the consequences of sin. But thankfully, even when we learn the hard way, God brings us back to him in his mercy. That anger is but a moment compared to a lifetime of his favor. Because he doesn't want us to perish, but live. Like David says, what gain is there in shedding my blood, in sending me down to destruction? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your truth? God doesn't want us to be sent down to destruction in hell. It profits him nothing. And God says so himself. He said to the prophet Ezekiel, As I live, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their evil way and live. God wants us to repent and turn to his mercy and forgiveness so that we do not die but live. And then God turns our mourning into dancing. He removes the sackcloth and ash of repentance and clothes us with Christ's righteousness. You probably remember my point of explaining the symbolism of ashes on Ash Wednesday when Lent begins. That in the Bible, wearing sackcloth and applying ashes to one's head were a symbol of repentance. They were to remind you of the fact that you were mortal and you were one day going to die because of your sin and you were going to return to dust and ash to nothing. But then God comes with his word of mercy. He hears our repentant cry and lifts us up from the dust and ash and promises us victory over death, victory over our mortality. He washes the ashes of mortality off of us with the waters of baptism, giving us life immortal by his mercy. He washes our sin away, takes off that sackcloth and puts on the robe of Christ's righteousness and perfection so that God no longer sees sin in us, but the perfection of his Son. This baptism raised us to spiritual life. It was then that faith was granted to our hearts that we were born again, made Christians who would follow in Christ's footsteps. Like him, we too will one day step out of our graves and live again after our death. This great victory over death could only come by the Lord's mercy. So as David encourages, exalt the Lord's victory. Make music to him. Thank God forever for giving us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Death might seem like a loss, but we know that Jesus has ultimate power over death. Jesus lives and death has died. Because of this victory, our mourning over death is quickly turned to dancing and rejoicing. Weeping may come for a night, but there is rejoicing in the morning. 
In times of sadness because of death, we can rejoice knowing Christ's victory over death. We know that when we die, God sends his angels to take our soul to be with him in heaven, and our body rests in peaceful sleep until that day when Jesus returns. And at his voice, just like with Jairus' daughter, he will call for all of us to get up and rise from our graves. And we shall awaken from death and with our own eyes see him, our Savior, our God and Lord, who granted us comfort even in death because he assured us that he defeated death. Until that day, exalt the Lord's victory over death. He gave us that victory by his mercy. So proclaim it, exalt it, so that many more may share that victory by faith. Amen. Please stand. We join together in the confession of faith of all Christians, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the prayer of the church on page 164. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Children in the grace of their baptisms, enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. Amen. We continue with the offering and the offering hymn. This time, please take a moment to sign the friendship registers located on the inside of the pews.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, this sacrament is a blessed gift from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a medicine of immortality meant to give us eternal life by forgiving our sins. This is indeed a powerful medicine, and as such it is dangerous if used not according to Jesus' instructions. Before we partake, we must repent of our sins and sincerely wish to abandon them. And furthermore, when we take it together, we express unity of belief with one another. As such, we ask that only members of our church and those churches in fellowship with us to partake of this sacrament today. We would love to have any guests not in fellowship with us to partake in the future. Please speak with me sometime after the service if you would like to make that happen. And now, therefore, since we are here assembled in the name of the Lord to receive his holy testament, let us proceed to the use and administration of the sacrament. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things, in him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate Word, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
O Christ, Lamb of God,
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for the closing hymn, Hymn 817.
morning once again, and thank you all for worshiping with us today. Special welcome to all our visitors in attendance today. We hope you join us again for worship sometime soon. Uh, just uh, one announcement to make note of. Uh, the El Dorado Parade and Picnic is coming up in a few weeks. As usual, we'll be entering a float in the parade to advertise our VBS program later this summer. Uh, and just to make sure everyone knows ahead of time, anyone who wishes to walk with the float or ride along is welcome to do so. Uh, we're also going to be looking for some volunteers soon to be helping us out with decorating the float uh, the, just before the parade. And uh, later on after that, we'll start... Uh, we'll also be looking for some more volunteers to help us decorate the fellowship hall for VBS. So just to have that on your horizon, we'll have more details to come in the future, but uh, just to make sure you all know ahead of time. Anyhow, uh, with that, oh, almost forgot. <laughs> it's the last Sunday of the month. <clears throat> so we'll close it with the Wells Connection. As soon as I get everything on and do this the right way. <laughs> <laughs> 